Hello there, and welcome to an update for Homewood Valley Railway, uh, my little round and round layout in my conservatory. Sorry there's been a little bit of a gap, I've been away doing some other things, but as you can see, I've also found a bit of time to do quite a lot of work on the layout. So we've got some scenic corners put in, and I have some back scenes now added, the tracks ballasted, and I've got buildings in rough positions. I've also spent about an hour the other night uh, running locos in different consists just to make sure that everything works and actually it's uh, quite a useful little layout especially with the fiddle yards. So let's talk you through some of the features that I've added to the layout. So in the back corner here those of you that remember um, Homewood the original layout will remember this little scene. Now actually it's a new one the buildings are the same but I've built a slightly lower and smaller town square kind of idea and I haven't bothered putting steps and ramps down to the town. So these are exactly the same buildings off Homewood. The War Memorial was um, 20p I think from Classic Rail which is particularly nice. I do have to put some corner pieces and some coping stones on and some chimneys that sort of thing but that little corner is largely done and it blends in very nicely with the back scene which is also half timbered. And you can see I've got the beginnings of the level crossing which is where the road will come into the station yard and the goods yard. So I was looking at the little station which we'll see in a minute and I decided the station wasn't quite grand enough. I built it really as a halt and I figured that I wanted it to look like a pretty big station. Uh, this canopy is one of the uh, wills ratio ones. Um, very simple little kit to build. I did find the instructions a little bit too simplistic but once you get your head around it. It is a multicoloured plastic kit and I'm going to do a little bit of painting on it, but I do find that once they're weathered and painted, they look fine, which I've still got to do with this. And the nice thing is you just need to punch holes in the cardboard to put it in. Uh, I didn't actually pay much for this. In fact, I didn't pay anything. I'm a big fan, as you all know, of Continental Modeler. And uh, 2016, I entered their competition to vote for the best layouts of the year, which they run every year. And the prize was uh, a big box full of free Pico stuff. Well mostly I got points because they're the expensive item but I did get a few buildings and this canopy was one of them. So that's going to really quite add to my station. And here's the station building which again some of you will recognise from the original Homewood uh, but effectively the other way round. So we now get to see the street side which still looks very nice. I've got to tidy up the platform and put chimney pots and so on back on but I'm very keen to reuse as many buildings as I can from the original Homewood uh, and this was one of my favourite little buildings all scratch built by myself so it didn't cost very much and that with the canopy and once I've got all the platforms done I think will make quite a nice significant station rather than just a little hall. So here we can see uh, a couple of features you can see the back scene and this is the good shed area so what we've got here is a good shed. As I say, I'm going to do a slightly posher one when I get round to it. This is just an interim one. There's going to be a little coal yard on the track next to that. But in fact, I just use them both as storage sidings. And you can see the fuel tank there on the diesel depot. What I'm still hoping to do here is that will be switchable. So I'm going to make a coal bunker and a water tower on one piece of card the diesel fueling and an office on another piece of card and I will just switch them whether I'm running diesels or steam locos. But I did a lot of shunting the other night and this works quite well with the three roads. You can have quite a lot of fun with it um, and I think we might have a little bit at the end of the video. Again, I got the coal bunkers from um, Richards. I think they were about £2 but they're quite detailed. They've all got coal and everything in them and the office is one of our offices from uh, little downloadable range. So if you haven't seen those, please go on our website and have a look. We've got a couple of station buildings and some huts and people are beginning to buy them and use them. We had a lovely picture from somebody who'd converted the station to a good shed, which was great. So that's going to be the little office there. So this hill again, some of you will recognise it from Homewood. Actually, it's only half the hill. I sawed it in half to make it fit this. I've not had to do anything to the rock face, but the grass was... Um, particularly faded so I've tried the idea worked quite well I've simply covered it in glue and then used the static grass applicator the hobby king one that we've done the video on which you know it really does look like long country grass so I'm quite impressed with that stuck some trees on stuck it on put a bit of grass on the bottom um, and then I've added a wall this is the again the, just the Pico cheap walling with poster paint rubbed in to do the pointing and then you can also see the back scene there. Standard Pico back scenes, 
Um, they're cheap, even new, they're one pound fifty. It's, it's just not worth me using anything else. Um, I will one day practice painting back scenes, but all the time I can get them that cheaply. And you can also see here that the roofing felt idea still looks great, still looks like ballast, and it does make the track very reliable. So we have the big rock face. Now, again, you'll have seen this rock face on several previous videos, but this actually is a new one. I actually bought it for a pound from a car boot sale, and we'll do a little video at some point because I've done a lot of work on this, painted it, dry, uh, black washed it, dry brushed it, I've added grass scatter to it on the some of it to make it blend in and that I'll find a way of blending it in but I just rather like having this big, big rock face in the back corner. So again a, a signal box that will be familiar to quite a lot of you this is the old well it was originally Faller then it was a company called Rovex and then it was Hornby and in fact Gage Master now have started remaking it in their range. I just rather like it it's a bit different it's big enough without being too big you've got internals in there it's pre-coloured. Um, I'm going to weather it a bit just to pick some of that out, but that's going to be my signal box that I've decided. Yeah, you've got, so you can see internals in there, it's got all the switching gear, and I just want something a little bit different. So I've got to make a base and everything, but that will be my signal box. And then the big change, I fancied doing a little bit of, I didn't want to do the classic hill over the back, so this is the hill at the front and the tunnel. And rather than put a hill on it, I've decided to put a little street scene. So these are the super quick buildings that everybody knows. This was actually the first super quick building I think Doug built. Doug put this together with me when he was about nine. And um, again, it needs a little bit of uh, TLC, but that's going up there. And then I'm going to blend all that in. And that works quite nice as a bit of a visual break to give the train somewhere to disappear into. And also a visual break from the fiddle yard. And this is the fiddle yard showing that you can have a couple of trains on here. It will take a class 29 and a couple of mark ones um, the other evening when I did the running test it, it, it works really well you can also store one as you can see here in the goods yard um, so this gives you probably a good idea so the fiddle yards in the bottom right hand corner uh, and you can see some locos going around that's come from so I can have quite good fun because I can run three different trains I can run two trains off and then shunt the goods yard uh, which is what I think we'll be doing in a moment in the film. So this is one uh, just running back in. There is a way, what I can do if I want, I can use the loop as a run around, as if it was a passing loop. So I can run the trains back round and pull the coach back in loco first if I want. And then this is just showing some of the shunting operations that I can do in the goods yard. So he's leaving his goods, his brake van there. Now this is a special short brake van, again I got from Classic Rail. It's quite a rare one, it's a Graham Farish double O, but it doesn't have the big uh, step after the veranda. So it's the same length as a standard short um, 12 ton goods wagon, which means I can get a bit more in my sidings. So he's taken those off, and he's gonna then pick up his brake van. Rough shunting, but that's why, they're called, that's why it's called shunting and then he can then take that away. Hi, thanks for watching the video and for the nice comments. Uh, click on the left for a previous video in this series, click on the right for another video you might enjoy, and please don't forget to click to subscribe, like, comment, etc. Thanks again.